Today I'll be doing a long-term review of the ski touring boots I have right beside me here, the Scarpa F1 LTs. These, kind of as the name implies, are from Scarpa. LT means light. They are lightweight touring boots made for fast and light type of missions, longer trips, and generally just when you don't want to be carrying around bricks on your feet. Scarpa manufactures ski touring boots for many different audiences, from the more classic Scarpa Mistrali, quite a lot heavier than this, to all the way on the other end for ski mountaineering athletes with their Alien series, which are incredibly light. The F1 LT here is kind of in the middle. It is considerably lighter than a conventional ski touring boot, but still actually has some pretty solid ski ability, able to actually drive decently wide skis and still actually kind of enjoy your turns downhill. These boots retail for about a thousand Canadian dollars. Usual disclosure at this point, I paid for these boots with my own money and I am not affiliated with Scarpa. If these boots look a little bit worn out, it's because I've been using them for about a year and a half now. So they have seen some wear, uh, seen some really interesting use situations, noticed some positives and some negatives about them, but overall quite a good boot. In terms of features of the boot, taking a look here, one thing you might notice right off the bat is that there are no lower buckles and on the upper part of the boot, a lot of straps, not a lot of metal. This is to minimize weight as much as possible. Lower buckles are done away with in exchange for a BOA system, kind of more common on snowboard boots, where you take this dial, press it in, turn to tighten, and that will compress a series of wires that run through the boot, inside it, and then tighten it up around your foot. And to disengage, you just pull this contraption off, that loosens the wires and you can get your foot out. For the top of the boot, there's a strap complete with numbers on the top. This takes a little bit of getting used to to dial in what number is appropriate for you. When you're going between walk mode and ski mode, a handy buckle on the side just allows a lot of free play for when you're touring around walking. Lock that into place, you're good to ski. This is also supplemented by a power strap up top, which I found, given that there's surprisingly little in the way of actual metal holding your foot in place, they actually have a fair bit of stability, work pretty well. The more robust part of the boot in the back, the ski walk mechanism, this would be kind of common to people who've seen other Scarpa boots. Uh, spring loaded, so less likely to pop off from ski to walk mode when you're actually skiing, which is a good thing. And yeah, overall, pretty easy to operate. You can get a bit of icing in the bottom part here, but it's fairly easy to deal with. The thing that really highlights just how light this boot actually is, is if you disengage these straps, put the boot in walk mode, and you peel off the actual ski part, here we have the liner and the lower boot. It really seems more like a ski slipper in this case, but the upper part of the boot does actually a good job. The cuff keeps your foot quite stationary, gives a good amount of support, and actually lets you ski fairly well, which is kind of surprising given how light it is and how little material is actually holding you in place. Weight is definitely a factor you're gonna be considering if you're in the market for purchasing a boot, such as the F1 LT. If we go in here, get my scale teared. And there we go. 1.02 kilograms. Take a look there. So just over a kilogram for a single boot. Uh, my feet are 27.5, so that's kind of a middle of the range size. But this is quite light for a boot that skis this well. In terms of other features looking at the boot, you can see you have our regular pin inserts, uh, a welt both on the front and the back that accommodates putting on a variety of crampons, quite useful. Uh, the bottom of the boot does have vibrant soles. You can see I'm starting to get a little bit of wear and tear. I walk on a lot of rocks. That's probably responsible for that, but overall, good amount of grip. And this is actually held up pretty well. If you purchase these boots, they come with Intuition liners that have their regular heat moldability that work quite well. I haven't had to actually 
punch out these boots at all, which is fairly rare. Usually I spend a lot of time in a boot fitter to get a better fit for, to make my foot uh, more amenable to the boot, but these ones just out of the box for me worked pretty well. Uh, look at the top of the boot too, got a Reco label. These boots have Reco tabs built into them, makes you easier to find for organized search and rescue groups. By far the main advantage of these boots is just how light they are. Compared to your conventional Alpine boots or even most entry level ski touring boots, it'll feel like you're just wearing hut booties when you're traveling in these. And they're also quite comfortable for your feet when you're walking around. I find, compared to my work ski boots, these are, doesn't really feel like you're wearing ski boots at all. Which is a good thing if you're planning to spend a lot of time in them. If you look at the specifications for this boot, it's described as having 72 degrees range of motion and walk mode, and a last of 100 millimeters. Yeah, it seems kind of silly to be talking about these boots inside. Might as well take them out into the snow and show you how they ski. Everything was going quite well with the boots until a BOA cable snapped. It was easy to get free parts from BOA to replace the cable, but the repair process involving threading the new cable through eyelets within the boot was quite tedious. After an hour of work, it was back to shredding. Okay, so after using these boots, the Scarpa F1 LTs, for about a year and a half, noticed quite a few good things about them. Some things that are concerning, but overall, if you are looking for a lightweight ski touring boot, I would recommend these. As I alluded to before, these boots are extremely light, and you're definitely going to enjoy that on the uphill. Setting skin tracks, it pretty much feels like you're wearing hiking boots or something similar. One thing you might actually find, given how light and uh, a little bit of flexibility these boots have, is they're going to force you to get better technique for skiing downhill. A uh, heavier boot, say something like the K2 Mindbenders, flex rating a 130 on those. There, the boot is stiff enough that if you're not really in the right balance point, the boot will help you out. In the Scarpa F1 LTs, you should really make sure that you're in a proper stance and weighting your skis appropriately as if you're not yeah you might start to have some issues so these boots can actually help out your ski technique in the long run for other negatives about these boots as i alluded to the the snap boa cable with the cable being inside the interior of the boot that was a heck of a lot of trouble to actually replace and even doing that inside if that were to happen during a longer trip that would be a Quite a tedious repair job if you had the materials even available and I would probably have to just get by with a large number of ski straps to stiffen up the boot otherwise but but yeah uh, if that boa cable was on the outside of the boot I would like it much better. In terms of who these boots are best suited for I'd say any sort of like ski mountaineering type mission where you want to be fast and light you don't want to be carrying a lot of foot weight around 
especially if the majority of your trip is going to be either more cross-country or uphill travel, then these are probably the boots for you. Uh, who are these boots not suited for? Generally, if you're looking for something with really high ski performance where you can drive wide skis in all kinds of conditions, then you might want to look at something heavier. You're going to have some troubles. It'll be more difficult to keep skis on edge in icy conditions. And generally, just the heavier boot you go, the more support there is and the more you can get away with. Uh, one other downside is the cost. These do retail for just under a thousand Canadian dollars, which admittedly is a little bit steep. But if you can afford it, I would recommend it. But yeah, overall rating, these are a pretty good pair of boots and I'm gonna keep using them. In any case, that's it for now. Happy trails.